In this segment, I'll demonstrate use of the AutoScript feature. The AutoScript feature is accessed from the Create Test screen. As we can see at the bottom of the screen, there's a bar labeled AutoScript. If we click this arrow here, the AutoScript window will appear. We may elect to resize that so that we can see more of it, which we do as follows. And we will see that there are three parts here in the auto script. The first is called start and this is where we would provide any instructions to the tester that they would require at the beginning of the test. So in this example for instance when this test begins you must have at least one item in the shopping cart. You will need a valid credit card number with a valid name, expiration, security code, and also valid numbers and names for the Amazon card and also for the gift card. The second section of AutoScript is called Test. Here we provide instructions to execute each test and we do that for each parameter that is to be entered. The first parameter in the case we're interested in here is, as we know, email address. So we would begin to type some instructions related to that. We would say Enter. We would then click Insert and what we see there is email address inside brackets is inserted. This is a placeholder for the actual value that will replace it in each individual test case. So let's read through this. I've pre-entered this to save a little time. Enter the email address. When you are instructed to enter an invalid email address, try a variety of options. Missing the at symbol, an invalid dot extension, when you enter an invalid email address, you should get an error message. If you do not, report a defect. If you do get an error message, you will be asked again. Now, enter a valid email address in order to continue. Note that it must be new, not already in the system. Make a note of the email address you used for future reference. Now, why would we do that? Remember that we're going to replicate this new customer case for uh, to create a set of tests for a returning customer. So in effect we're entering a new customer into the database which we can later use as a returning customer and that's why we make a note of their email address. So what we see here is we have written a generalized instruction that will then be repeated for each individual test case with the difference as shown in this lower window here. Here we have the specific result that would occur for the first test case. It will say enter invalid email address. Now in the first test case that is the actual value to be entered and so the system will replace the placeholder email address with the actual value in each individual test case that is generated. So in essence you write the instruction for each parameter once. You must write it in a sufficiently generalized way that it will be appropriate and accurate for every individual test case when the actual value of that placeholder is substituted as in this example. Several additional things are worth noting here. First, Notice that we have not instructed the tester what to use as an invalid email address. We've given them some general instructions and we've left it to their discretion as to exactly what will in fact be entered in each instance, but we've encouraged them to explore the topic more broadly. An additional thing to notice here is that once we inserted email address, the system will automatically show the next parameter name which happens to be customer status. And we'll see here that we've written another generalized instruction. Click the customer status customer button. And we see that translates into, in the first individual case, click the new customer button. That's the value that has been substituted for customer status. And so on. We can go through this and generate instructions for each parameter we go through the entire list. We have now provided the tester some 
fairly explicit instructions about what we want them to do and recall that we have a lot of discretion about how specific we want to be. We could leave a lot of discretion to the tester or we could be very specific and that will of course depend on the context. The final section of AutoScript is called Finish and these are, are the instructions we would provide uh, relating to the conclusion of the test. So for example in this instance make a copy of the orders database when you have completed all test cases and then restore the database to the initial state. Hexawise is a software test design tool. To sign up for free licenses see http colon slash slash hexawise.com and for more instructional videos see hexawise.tv